Okay, so in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use PhotoP to create the fire text. Um, so I've loaded up PhotoP. I'm going to start off by creating a new blank image. And I'm going to set the image to 1600 by 1000 pixels. Leave it at 72 dots per inch. Then create it. Okay, so I've now got a blank document now as white. Obviously we want the background of that to be black. So from the edit menu we can go to fill, set this to black and then OK just to fill it with black. Okay, now we can go straight ahead and put the text on that we're going to put the effect on. Use that by using the type tool or the text tool down inside here. Click that. Choose a font that's nice, quite thick font. Um, so it's going to be display the effect of the flames quite well. Set the colour to white and then put the size here as big as it will go. And then click in here, obviously, and draw in fire. Okay, that might be a bit big, doesn't matter. We can OK that. Then we can click here to the select and then we can actually resize it and move it around a bit okay so you can make it smaller stretch it a bit leave it taller leave it so you've got some space at the top up here to actually put the effect in when you're happy with it with the text um, click off that then we need to convert that from text into an actual bitmap image that we can edit and we do that by right clicking and click rasterize that now converts it into an image you see the background's gone transparent one final thing we need to do now is to duplicate this layer by right clicking it duplicate layer we've now got fire and fire copy now the fire copy layer we're going to turn off so it's hidden and then make sure that we're working on the fire layer and now we're going to start adding the flame effect by using the wind effect. Now the wind effect moves uh, by imagining blowing wind across the text to stretch it a bit. Um, it's a bit easier if I just show you. So to do it we need to rotate our image by using image transform and then rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So turn it that way. And then from the filter menu we're going to stylize wind. Now you see a bit on there, you can just see it starting to blur a bit down there. Put it onto blast and see what it looks like. Yeah, so now we're getting the flame effect. Now we can put this on a few times. Put on another one, maybe one more. Okay, try stagger, yeah, blast, well, that'll probably do. That's probably enough to be getting on with to start with the text. Okay, now we can rotate it back. Um, image, transform, let's rotate it back anti-clockwise 90 degrees. Okay, so at the moment that fire looks a bit sort of spiky, a bit sharp. What we need to do is blur it a bit. So we're going to add another filter this time called blur and we're going to use this one called Gaussian blur and we're going to set that down to about one and a half pixels like that and it just blurs it a bit so it's not as sharp so when the flames are going it's not as um, spiky okay the next thing we're going to do is create a duplicate of the background layer so make sure the background is selected and duplicate it so we've got two. Now we're going to bl merge these two together, the fire layer and the background. We're going to blend into one layer. Um, we do that by selecting the fire layer, right click, and we're going to merge down. And that will merge the two layers together. So now when we start editing the fire effect, it's got the black background and it will merge it together and add the effect. Okay, now we can start actually adding the flame effects 
to actually add the flame so we've got to start being a bit creative um, we're going to use the filter called liquify and leave it on the top one called smudge now leave your brush size to about a hundred up here now you can change the brush size by using the square bracket on your keyboard so the square bracket will make it um, increase decrease you can see that changing so I'd start off with it about a hundred and then start to draw flames on do some big ones first and sort of bend them around mate and try and look, to look as much like fire as you can uh, maybe change the brush smaller do some smaller ones down here this is where you can take your time the more time you take on this the more realistic you can get your flames to look um, let's do some really small ones sort of spiky ones here and we maybe have maybe one big one coming out that way then when you've done click OK now there's our fire effect starting to look a bit more like flames Okay, before we do any more we're going to rename this layer so we know which layer um, the flames are on because we're going to start adding more layers as we go along so it's going to get a bit more complicated so double click on there and just rename it flames just so we know what layer we're working on now we're going to start adding the colors to the flames we're going to use do that by adding adjustment layers now adjustment layers are down the bottom here new adjustment layer so click new adjustment layer and this one is going to be a hue and saturation layer so click that and now we're going to adjust this to change the color so the hue is the color that it will be set that to about 40 so around there that'll do and then the saturation to 100 Up full and now you see the color starting to add okay what we need to do to this layer is click colorize so it actually changes the color okay now I want that to be around 40 the saturation at 100 so that's actually colorized the image okay we're now going to add a second adjustment layer so add another hue and saturation this time hue and saturation this time we're not going to colorize it but we're going to put the hue to a negative value of about minus 15 and it will start add minus 16 that'll do and it will start to add some actual flame color to it okay so that's our second adjustment layer so now we can start to see the flame color emerge so one final thing we need to do with this second uh, adjustment layer is change the blend mode now that's where it says normal here at the moment that's just a normal layer but we want to change it to an overlay change to an overlay and you see the difference it makes so it starts to blend the two together so it blends the two axis adjustment layers together okay now we're going to start adding more color to the actual text and we're going to do that by adding another adjustment layer but this time we're going to adjust the levels of the image so make sure we've got the flames selected we're now going to add another adjustment layer down here but this time it's going to be levels that we're going to change and this is the levels of the color that are actually in the image and we want to drop this down to about 185 186 something like that and you'll see the flame color starting to appear now Okay, so that's the start of the, the fire effect now we're going to come back to the original text and start to color that as well so remember we made a, f a copy of the fire layer up here we're now going to turn that on and you see uh, the original copy of the text that we had there and then we're going to rename that text so we've got two parts of the image we've got the actual text and we've got the fire behind it now Okay, now we're going to start adding color to the actual text 
and we're going to use that by using an effect and a, called a gradient overlay so make sure we're on the text layer here come down to the bottom here it says effects or layer style and we're going to put a gradient overlay on and this at the moment it's put that silvery effect on um, I'll make sure we've got gradient selected here gradient overlay and we need to select the two colors for this gradient so it starts at a dark color and it ends at this light color obviously we want some sort of fire some flame colors so we're going to double click down this end of the gradient and I'm actually going to type the values in that I want I want this to be 7 for the hue which is the H saturation which is how strong the color is is going to be 100 and we're going to put the brightness down to about 27 and you see that starts to become a sort of fiery color now we're going to click the other end of the scale right up here and this time we're going to set that to 30 for the hue not as saturated so it's going to be 95 and then but 96 for the brightness so it's quite bright and click OK OK again and then OK again now we can see that our text we've got this gradient overlay so it starts quite dark down here and as we get closer to the top it gets a lighter colour that started putting the gradient effect on there OK, we're going to now start putting some more effects on that text. We're going to put an outer glow around that text. So again, with our effects down here in the layer options, this time we're going to put outer glow. And this is the colour. Make sure we've got outer glow selected. This is the colour that's going to be the glow. Uh, and this time I'm going to set the hue to zero. Saturation to about 95 and the brightness also to about 95 and click OK and that will put a glow around the outside of the edge now we need to actually adjust how much of, of the glow there is so now we're going to adjust how much that actual glow effect because it, uh, is there at the moment you can't see any glow around any, any the edge of the text so we'll set the opacity down to about 60 that's how much light actually shows through it now we'll start changing the color, the, the size, sorry. So we can change the size and you'll see the glow effect start to appear. If you whack it right up full, you get a nice big effect there. But for a nice subtle flames effect, put it down to about 40, 50 the most. So we've got a nice glow effect around it. Okay, and while we've got this effect still on, we'll actually put an inner glow. So an inner glow comes on the inside of the text. Let's put another one on. This side we're going to change the colour to a slightly lighter colour. And let's put it to about 20, 100 for the saturation. And the brightness can be about 90. Sometimes you have to do this again um, because it doesn't always pick up what you've typed in and change the colour. Let's put it at 90. Okay, so this is an inner glow on the inside. Opacity, going to put it all the way up to 100, so it stands out a bit more. And the size, not as big this time, probably to about 20, 30 at the most. About there. You can OK that. So now we can start to see the flames effect coming into a lot more detail. Okay, so what we want to do now is to start to blend the actual flames to the text. Now that becomes quite tricky. Um, we're going to do that with a thing called a layer mask, which is down here. Click a layer mask on here. It's got a raster mask. Right, and it puts a mask on here. Now we're going to select the brush tool. Make sure our color is set to black. Before we paint anything, click the options at the top. Now set the hardness all the way to zero and uh, probably the size to about 40 42 pixels and you can always adjust the size of the pixels of the brush by using the square brackets if you need to and what we're going to do is draw across the top of the letter there subtly just so it blends it in together so it hasn't got such a hard edge 
you can be a bit sort of creative with this you don't have to do it perfectly but just so it subtly blends in between the facts of fire and the actual text so do it where the flames are predominantly just so it blends in a bit more you can obviously take your time a bit more with that to make it look a bit better but that just subtly blends in the, t the two layers the actual flames and the actual text Okay, and next thing we're going to do is start doing is affecting the text so it's not a solid colour. We're going to start putting some um, subtle effects on it. Now, the first one we're going to use is the clouds filter. And we do that, we're going to add a new layer from down the bottom here. Put a new layer, and that layer one will appear above here. You could double click it and rename it clouds if you want. And then on that layer, we're going to go to the filter, render clouds now before you do that check that your colors down here are set to black and white so it's going to draw clouds all over your image and at first you'll do this and you'll think everything's gone wrong don't worry that's just got to affect uh, we've just got to change now the main, the blending mode between the two layers between our clouds layer and the text at the moment it's set to normal if I set it to overlay it now overlays the two so you get that effect of the clouds only on the bit of the fire text and not all over the image and that should more or less set off your uh, completed fire text obviously you can take more time with drawing the flames making them a bit more artistic look a bit better than that you could take your time and draw in some of the, the effects where you eat into parts of it by using the blend tools at the top but that's the basic effect of how you make fire text. Um, when you've finished it, you might want to export it as a PNG or a JPEG, which you could save to your computer, or you can save it as a PSD. If you save it as a PSD, that's saved as a Photoshop file. So that will maintain all the information about the different layers that we've got here. Once you save it as a PNG, it will actually lose all that layer information and just save it as one set flat image so then I've downloaded a PNG there and that's it that's how you create fire effect there's the downloaded PNG if I wanted to save that or print it or add that to any other document but that's saved as a PNG now so I could print it if I needed to or save it